Okay, this is the last question, John. In recent years, it seems the quality of the leading liberal black public intellectuals appears to be declining. In one generation, we've gone from Cornell West, who, whether or not you agree with his views, is undeniably brilliant, to Michael Eric Dyson, to ta Codes, to Ibram X. Kendi. I think that's a smooth gradient down. That's me adding that. <laughs> Uh, whom Glenn correctly characterizes as an empty suit. What do you think explains this decline in quality? Mm. Do you agree with the premise? Do you have an account? Over the past 10 years, it has become especially fashionable among educated whites to demonstrate awareness of the operations of what's called societal racism. You're supposed to know what that is. If you don't, you're either dumb or evil or some combination. That's been true for a long time, but it really steps up with the entrenchment of social media and with Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown and various events. White America really, educated white America, really gets off on feeling black pain. And so I think what you're seeing is that a person whose only message essentially is racism exists, is embraced because you show that you like that person's work and that's a shorthand way for showing that you are a good person. As I said on this show in various ways, I think that was the essence of ta Coates's appeal on the level that it was. It's not that he didn't deserve attention for some good writing, but that godly way he was treated for a while, he was treated like Jesus, was because of that. He has withdrawn completely from the field. It's almost perplexing. So then you need another figure that you treat like that. Some of it is Nicole Hannah-Jones, but she's not, she's not a super celebrity in the way that Kendi is. But Kendi is just the new coat. It's the transferring allegiance to a new person of that kind. I'm going to say it. Kendi makes me miss Coates, in a way. <laughs> I mean, I used to sometimes say I wished <laughs> Coates brought more to the plate, but God, Coates is Heidegger compared to Kendi. But they are basically the same thing. So I'm just kind of going to leave that there. There's been a coarsening of what people seek in Black intellectuals because of social media culture. And it means that somebody who has that one message that racism still exists, racism still exists, can get a whole lot more traction than they would have 20 or 30 years ago when you had to have more to say than that. And so, for example, Michael, Michael Eric Dyson, that's what he's all about, too. But he can approach it from so very many different angles. For example, Dyson you know, put out an anthology called The Dyson Reader rather early on. And there was a whole lot in there. And you couldn't say that the man doesn't have a certain interest in things. I don't imagine a Kendi reader that would be of the substance of, of that book. Um, with Cornell West, you'd have to do transcriptions of his speeches because he doesn't like writing. But you would see that he can do Cervantes. I did a thing with him about Sondheim, Stephen Sondheim. He knows his Sondheim. Oh, he told me during the interview, say hello to my friend John McWhorter and tell him we both love musical theater. I think he might have said Sondheim. I think he might have said Sondheim. He knew his Sondheim backwards and forwards. And so, yes, there is a difference these days. I hate to, I'm not going to say more because it gets to the point where you know all these people, but yes. Yeah, they, you don't want to come off as if you're jealous of them or uh, carping. Um, I interpret your answer as the decline in the quality of black public intellectuals is because white people have lost their minds. Yes. Or, you know, not lost their minds, but white people seek to congratulate themselves on being aware of racism to a I'm remembering, excuse me, I'm remembering a David Brooks column in the New York Times around the time that Between the World and Me was hot that was entitled Reading ta Coates While White. You've heard of driving while black. Well, David Brooks is reading coats while white. And I, it just, you know, <laughs> I, shook my, I shook my head at that. I say, man, you white people have gone crazy. Uh, I, I'll say this about coats. He can write. I mean, I've uh, been teaching. I was just out at the University of Austin, as I, I might have mentioned when we had the biweekly uh, conversation earlier, teaching a summer course, week-long 
meeting uh, 90 minutes in the morning, 90 minutes in the afternoon, a seminar with 20. I assigned Coates' essay on reparations from The Atlantic, that long piece that he did, that uh, very uh, iconic writing. piece. Yeah. It, it's, it's lyrical. You know, I mean, we took the argument apart and, and dissected it and, and uh, parsed it and, and rebutted it and, and so forth. But the, but the writing is, is, is just kind of, uh, it's, it's not half bad. And the writing in Between the World and Me is not half bad either, mm-hmm. I think. He was a he was a, a writer, and he was um, somebody who thought passionately. Yeah, def- definitely. It was frustrating sometimes to be um, to to be working while he was the the dominant voice. But a little bit of retrospection makes me miss him a little bit. Yeah, he wasn't nice to me <laughs> or to you. But he's still with us. He's just withdrawn from the field. We, I gather he's writing for Marvel Comics or something like that. That's what I've heard. Apparently, you have to give it to him in a way to really figure I have said what I have to say, and I know it, and now I'm really not going to say anything. You know, barely anything after George Floyd even. And he's you know, a little bit now and then, but he's done. He wants to do other things. I admire that in a way. He doesn't want to spend his whole life saying the same thing over and over again. None of us should. I, yeah, I think I he did the that. right thing. I, I I like that. 